Hey guys, Crystal Grace here and welcome back to another pick a card reading. This one is all about what do people admire about you but do not share with you. Four piles to choose from. Pile number one, we have the Priestess card. Pile number two, we have Saint Lucy. Pile number three, we have uh, Fortuna. And pile number four, we have Ishtar. So take a moment to connect with one of these piles. You might be called to connect with multiple, but one is always plenty. With that said, let's jump into it. Anything that doesn't resonate, simply let fly. That message is not for you. Hey, Pile One, welcome to your reading. So before we jump into what people admire about you but do not wish to share, we'll just grab some Astro cards to help you feel like you've connected to the right pile, but I actually feel like these cards will be self-representation of you and why you've connected. So we do have Earth Elements, Capricorn, Virgo and Taurus. We have Mars here, which is Aries. <clears throat> you know, I'm feeling really strong, sturdy energy with this pile. Like you guys really know who you are, what you represent in this world. Uh, we have the 12th house, which I believe is Pisces. And the sixth house, we have Virgo, so all about routine. It's funny, we've got Pisces again on the bottom of the deck. So so we have, um, what is it, earth, fire, and water, uh, I guess, in the essence of Pisces. Uh, and then, yeah, so Vir strong Virgo, Aries, and strong Pisces. Uh, but take that as it resonates. It doesn't have to um, be your sign placements, but you probably feel very... Um, connected with the fact that you are very stable at this point in your life maybe you really had to force yourself to become or have some kind of transformation uh into getting to where you are today um <clears throat> you know pisces are very um big dreamers um you know they do dream big they also believe in their dreams as well so i kind of feel like you guys can probably resonate with that or at least this is what people admire about you and, you know, there's nothing like being organized and having all your ducks in a row, which is the kind of vibe I'm picking up with this. So straight off the bat with this priestess card, I would strongly say a lot of people admire your uh, ability to, um, I don't know, for me, initiate contact with the other realm is what I'm really picking up with the initiation word there on the card itself. Like I feel like people are very motivated or by you and maybe by your creativity um a lot of you are probably activists in certain aspects of your life maybe certain social issues as well or social injustices which naturally a lot of people admire that about you you probably speak up when people like don't speak at all um <clears throat> some of you may have a tarot channel like platform whether it's instagram tiktok or whatever, but I feel like the people close to you really appreciate this about you or they admire how you're really putting yourself out on show. Um, I feel like a lot of people around you hide their spirituality um, where you don't. You sort of like see how her jacket is so creative, right? It's got a very strong flair. I just feel like you are very open and honest about who you are, what you stand for. And I feel like everyone around you or anyone that meets you is uh, very uh, inspired by that. Um, there's also this element, right, because the other cards that were chosen, all the women are f facing the camera, where this one is facing the, has her back turned. Um, I'm also being drawn to the halo around the head. So this definitely tells me people... <clears throat> I don't think they tell you this, your intuition or your accusations are always accurate, but they never tell you it because I feel like for this pile, because you guys are so grounded, you're very stable, you're a force to be reckoned with even. Um, people don't tell you how accurate you are or accurate your uh, messages are solely on the basis that they probably feel and don't take this 
the wrong way that you are already overly confident and you don't need more confidence or the fact that you already know that what you say is true um, it doesn't matter if somebody believes you or not you know what messages you receive from the other side are accurate so uh, whether people believe it then and there they'll eventually see the light so I feel like a lot of you <clears throat> have people around you who you could be having conversations with them part one and you're telling them things and they're actually sitting there very mind blown. The fact that like, how does part one know to be saying this to me right now? Like I haven't even told them X, Y, Z. So there's definitely your level of um, spiritual gifts uh, being uh, highlighted here. Your crown chakra is, is very active. I feel like it's also... Um, you're a very open-minded person as well and I think people really admire that about you because they feel they can come to you with sort of any um, story. This could even be client base. If you do have a client, you may have a lot of different clients coming to you and they feel comfortable to ask any kind of question. Not all readers will allow certain questions to be asked. So I feel like for this pile, if that is resonating, like if you are a tarot reader, I feel like your clients really admire you. They may not give you a lot of feedback on your platform. Um, and that more has to do with the fact that they don't want people to know that they're using um, like divination uh, tools to navigate their life. I would say that's more about that. Um, so yeah, let's keep moving. Um, actually, before we do move on, I feel like that journey and the blessing there, I feel like a lot of people who know you on a personal level, part one, they really admire how like you go on any journey that you desire and always at the end, doesn't matter how rocky the journey is, you're always, uh, at the end of every journey, you receive a blessing. And I think they just, um, they not only get inspired by this, but they just really admire like um, your perseverance in life. Um, and I feel like, like I said, she's got her back turned to us. So there's this element there that people really admire how you turn your back on anything that does not serve you. Um, you sort of just walk through life. And if <clears throat> maybe if you initiate... Um, if you initiate friendship or romantic um, like experiences and those people are not a blessing to you or do not sort of like, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just getting over being sick. So, yeah, I feel like what people admire about you is the fact that you see people, you give, you give, you invite, you initiate any kind of relationship, you allow anyone to sort of enter your life. But if these people do not serve your highest good or they try and lower your vibration, you just walk away very calmly, cool, relaxed. You're very up in your mind. You, you're very, uh, very much in the, like in another dimension or something here. And, um, I think a lot of people love that because they may be still in a vibration where they will fight for stuff that is actually not uh, worth their time. So hopefully that is sort of resonating. Um, let's go tarot. <clears throat> so what do people like or admire about pile one but will not say? So we have the Five of Swords, Ten of Cups, the World, the Empress, wow, the Emperor, I want one more, and Temperance, wow guys, so uh, you're the creme of the creme and Nine of Cups, okay, so this is really positive, you know, like there's, there's some big big energy here and like let's kick it off with the five of swords <laughs> um you know and and don't be disheartened with the five of swords you know this basically tells me that <clears throat> people admire how you handle unexpected change so most people when unexpected change comes into their life it's very conflicting for them or heaps of conflicts come come from that and some other people when you know they're faced with a lot of change they they allow it to sort of defeat them when well, you don't. You're not defeated. 
Um, I definitely feel like people admire how you face problems head on. Um, you know, you can handle conflict pretty quickly as well. You're also really good at compromising, um, you know, probably more better than most people. You know, you probably, um, you can probably handle a lot of attacks. You know, some like for, for me, I give sort of people three chances, three opportunities. And if they don't want to like rectify their shitty behavior, you're out. So I kind of feel like you guys maybe give five chances and then if the person does not rectify their behavior, they're out. Like you're out. You're like, bye Felicia. So with the Ten of Cups here, um, I kind of feel like, you know, if you guys are psychic, intuitives, whatever, you're already going to be picking up the energy of what people really admire about you. This blows my mind, to be honest. Like to have the Empress and the Emperor here um, really says you guys are well balanced. And the Temperance card just sort of uh, reiterates that for me. But um <clears throat> I think people really love, um, with the Ten of Cups, it could be the the love you have for the divine or how much trust you have in the universe is what I'm really picking up here. And I think they um, really admire how you only focus on blissful relationships. Like if a relationship is not bringing you harmony and it isn't aligning with like, you know, your goals, your morals, your ethics, uh, again, there's this essence that you will walk away, you'll remove it. Anything that's misaligned with your values, you'll disconnect from. Um, they really admire how hard you've had to, obviously thinking about the five of swords there, I feel like a lot of people admire how hard, like the shit you've had to go through to be where you are today. Um, you know, some of you with the world card here, you've traveled the world. Um, and this was probably, uh, for some people around you, very unexpected. Like how did pile one get to travel the world, especially if you didn't come from like, you know, a super wealthy family, but having the world card here would definitely indicate, uh, people admire all the achievements that you have had, um, accomplished. Um, and there's this level of fulfillment you have in your life that a lot of people I feel want you know, pile one, I think they envy, however you're living your life, the people around you are very envious and they don't tell you this because they're already chosen their life. So you could imagine oh, like an example would be like, um, I want to be mindful of how I say this. Um, but you know, I've got friends who have, um, uh, had children at a really young age, like when we were 18 and stuff. And um, they don't regret it, uh, not, a, not at all. But things they'll say when, I, like, I don't have children. So when I tell them about, like, my life and what's going on and stuff, um, you know, they love listening to those stories because their life is very different. So I kind of feel like with you guys, um, like sweetie here is going to say hello. She's very different, aren't you? I'm doing a reading and I already give you cuddles this morning. Oh, I'm just going to pause and remove her bum, guys. No one wants to see your bum. Okay, sorry here about the nudity. Um, <clears throat> where was I? With the world... Oh yeah, so the analogy I'm sort of giving, it's like they don't, they're not going to tell you how much they admire your life because they would feel like they were doing the wrong thing or saying the wrong thing or um, coming across that they don't appreciate the life that they've paved for themselves is, is the best way of putting it. Um, so it's not to say that they don't want the life that they have, but at the same time, um, you guys probably live your life very vicariously. I think that is the right word. So you can go where you want, do what you want. You, you kind of don't have shackles on your ankle. And if you do have, you know, um, <clears throat> if you do have kids and things like that, you've managed to, um, juggle your, um, role as a parent, but also still have your freedom as well. And that can be really hard for a parent to learn, especially when all you want to do or all a parent wants to do is just ensure their child has the best of everything. It's very easy for a parent to forget about themselves and forget about, you know, caring for themselves. And I feel like for any of you who do have children, you've definitely mastered that. And that is not something that is easily mastered. Like a lot of, um, women particularly, um, 
really struggle to to master that because there's this sense of guilt like oh if I focus on me I'm not focusing on my child and therefore I don't love my child and that's completely wrong but that is a that is definitely a, a psychological process a lot of new mothers go through so take that as it resonates so I just want to make it clear I'm not trying to downplay anything <clears throat> So moving on to the Empress here, this is why I do feel like I've got some mothers watching this group. So whether you are a mother or not, the Empress card here would definitely tell me a lot of people admire, um, what's the best way of explaining this? Um, your femininity, I guess. But again, like there's something about like your mothering hood. So if you are a parent, it's specifically targeting what they might admire about you is how you mother your children. Okay, and for other, and it could be fur babies as well. Um, but for others of you, if you don't have kids, it's your level of femininity. But all together, combined, doesn't matter if you've got kids or not here, it's that level of creativity coming through again with the Empress. Um, you may be a big advocate for divine feminine, divine masculine energies as well, given the Empress and the Emperor here. But I kind of feel like if you're a single parent or you're a single woman or a single man, people love the fact that you show up for yourself in either energy. So, um, you know, if you're a woman, you're also the man that you always wish you could be with. And if you're a man, you love yourself and nurture yourself the way um, a woman you wish you could be with or vice versa and flip it to whatever uh, gender you are attracted to. Um, so I feel like a lot of people love the fact that you've mastered, um, those two energies. And I would say they're more targeted to the people who are more spiritual around you. Um, and for others of you, I feel like it's this level of stability coming through again. So we have stability up here with the earth element card and the emperor talks about somebody who's very stable, somebody who's built uh, very strong foundations. There's a lot of order in their life, a lot of structure, again, which we see that in the sixth house routine, Virgo. So what this tells me, people admire the great lengths you've gone through or gone to in order to be where you are today, part one. So you've obviously gone to hell and back and you've come out on the other side with the temperance card. He's super balanced. Like it probably probably blows people's mind a lot given if you've gone through a lot of trials and tribulations and you shouldn't be well balanced and you are, I think people really admire this. You've probably been a very patient person uh, in order to obtain this balance and bring all this peace into your life. But um, I feel overall... You guys are really good examples of um, four people around you of what you can go through and then still come out on the other side if you sort of just keep an open mind. So, yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Let me know down in the comments if you like this reading. I can do another one. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of these ones. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, Pile 2, those of you who choose St. Lucy, this is your reading. Before we jump into it, we're going to just pull some Astro cards. Help you connect with this pile. So we have Black Moon Lilith on the bottom. Mystery. Some of you could be quite mysterious. We have South Node. Part of Fortune Increase, Neptune, and we have the 11th house friends. So given the subject matter, subject matter, who are you? Um, <clears throat> the reading is all about, you know, what do people think about you but won't say, and friends has really jumped out here. I have to say this is maybe some of you are wanting to know what your friends are currently thinking about you at this point in time. Um, but yeah, 11th house is connected with Aquarius. Uh, part of fortune increase. And south node, you know, whatever your south node is, um, that sign placement. So, um, yeah, there's not a lot here. Maybe I could pull a couple more. Might use the tarot. Show me sign placements for pile number two. Okay, 
say? Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords. Uh, what have we got here? Six of Cups and Justice. So uh, Six of Cups is linked with Scorpio energy. Uh, the Temperance card is Sagittarius and Justice is Libra. Okay. Um, Libra is connected with Venus. Venus is also Taurus. So I'll just leave those here. Actually, we don't need them. Um, Gemini for Ten of Swords. All right. <clears throat> so what do people admire about you but do not tell you? Uh, look, straight up with South Node, I kind of feel like life debts. I kind of feel there's like this karmic energy there, to be honest. Um, I feel like, um, and with the Black Moon Lilith mystery, I kind of feel like there's something that there's an area in your life, Pile 2, that you have yet to be successful in. I feel like people admire how successful you are in all of your life and maybe no hang on people admire you because of who you are uh there's an area in your life you're not very successful and it's going to be very different some of you it could be like you have an amazing career but your love life is not that great like you have a really bad dating track record like you might attract narcissists or like love bombers people who just sort of want to waste your time while others of you you may have the family of a dream like you know the white picket fence but your career is not that great so uh, or it could be the fact like you have amazing friends, you've got good work, you've got great lover, but your family's really shit. Like, so hopefully that's, uh, you're picking up what I'm putting down there. There's an area of your life that seems like it has a lot of karma around it. And I feel like a lot of people admire the fact that you understand that, um, you know, part of the fortune that you do have, something's got to give. So I feel like a lot of you, um, you know, our deemed saints, if we think back to this card, St. Lucy, there's this element of you that's quite saintly, okay? You may do a lot of charity work and that could be just in the means of giving your um, clothes to your uh, friend who, you know, could be a single mom, something like that, right? So I kind of feel like for you guys, you don't allow this misfortune in one area of your life to to affect you okay i still feel like with the faith here you have faith that you'll eventually um master that area in your life and this lady i assume is blind okay so some of you may actually have a form of disability okay and i feel like there are people around you a, a physical disability there's people around you who admire you so much because you don't allow that to like um, what's the word? You don't allow that to downplay who you are or what you're here to do. Like I still feel like you get up in the morning, you show up, you get dressed, you move on. And there's just some sort of like karmic energy around you that I kind of feel people talk about or think about how um, and admire the fact that there is some kind of karma around you, but you don't allow that to ruin your day. You get back on the horse and you carry on is the kind of vibe I'm picking up here. So Neptune and sacrifice would definitely indicate to me people admire the sacrifices you have made because you've obviously made some pretty hefty sacrifices for people to think about you and sacrifice as a thing, right? A lot of people don't sit around thinking, you know, Rhonda's made a lot of sacrifices um, because they just don't. I don't. I don't really think people sit around thinking about that. Um, whereas that's why I feel like maybe these are your close friends who are thinking are uh, sort of come to this table today uh, to deliver these messages. Um, I'm getting over the flu, so I'm going to pause the video and do my thing um, because that's the polite thing to do. Uh, so, yeah, bear with me. 
Um, sacrifice. Some of you may have even had to sacrifice your single life. I don't know. Maybe some of you could actually, it will be a message for somebody. Maybe sacrifices have been made for you to be with somebody who has a physical disability. So that'll be a message. A lot of people admire that, whoever that message is for. Uh, so let's look at this uh, 11th house with friends. What do people, people may just admire your friends. Like they may be quite jealous of your friends. Um, you know, they, they may admire. And if you don't have good friends, It, it could be that they might admire the fact that you don't have any friends. So yeah, I, I would say that element there with the 11th house and friends is definitely um, sort of indicating for, for you. It's either if you've got good friends, people admire your friends. They probably want friends like you. And if you don't have any friends, they probably admire how you don't need friends. Um, I kind of also getting this message, like you're not the kind of people who will keep friends around who are dishonest or like if friends aren't, you're not, you know, um, vibing with people. You don't have them around just so you've got friends is the sort of vibe I'm picking up there because, um, being like pile number one, you guys can probably find it pretty easy to, um, close the door on uh, friends or people. Probably not romantic lovers is sort of the vibe I'm picking up. All right, so let's move into the tarot. So what do people like about pile number two but will not say? I'm going to take reversals for this pile. So we have Queen of Wands in reverse. I'm feeling you guys may be really feisty. So we have Judgment, Seven of Swords, King of Swords. Um, Knight of Wands in reverse. That's interesting knight of swords a lot of swords energy seven of pentacles seven of wands in reverse seven of pentacles okay so sorry um yeah i don't know why i say sorry you guys don't know when i pause the video and have to break off and live life and then come back to the reading so i'll stop trying to do that okay so the judgment card we have seven of swords in reverse king of swords knight of wands in reverse knight of swords seven of wands and seven of pentacles queen of wands overall energy in reverse so let's start with judgment so judgment would indicate you guys, something like has been resurrected or you've resurrected something in your life, which is what people really admire about you. Now, with the Queen of Wands, this could indicate, because um, the overall energy people admire about you, you could be really hot-tempered. You could like have a level of selfishness pile number two that people really admire and there's nothing wrong with that Like especially if you've been a person who's been selfless your whole life And then one day you wake up and you, you've just had sort of like enough Is the kind of um, energy I'm picking up here. Maybe now you're very hot-tempered So people maybe really admire how you don't take people's shit and I feel like with the judgment card here you may call people out for their really bad decisions. You may judge people very harshly. Um, in the eyes of some people, but at the same time, they really admire that you're able or capable of to judge people really harshly, is sort of what I'm picking up here. Seven of Swords in reverse, though, as um, something people admire about you. It could have something to do with some sort of resurrection of self. So they admire how you're able to turn over a new leaf. So 
maybe you were really selfish so maybe it's the other way there with the overall energies queen of wands maybe you guys were really selfish in your life and now you're very selfless so you're turning over a new leaf so take that as it resonates because obviously a lot of you watch this pile or watch the videos um you know and there's this element of seven of swords in reverse about keeping things moving forward you know um it's all um it's also putting everything out on the table, not hiding anything, right? You you are who you are. And the King of Swords would definitely uh, like reinforce that. The King of Swords is very logical. Um, they're very outspoken. They're very direct in their communication. With a lot of uh, most swords being here, this would definitely tell me you guys are very clear cut with your communication now. Maybe you weren't like that before. Um, I feel like... For a lot of you, um, your intelligence as well is what probably uh, gets you a lot of admiration as well. But same with the truth. Like I think you guys only speak the truth. You don't hide anything. Um, and again, this comes back down to you. Like if a spade is a spade, like you don't try and say, oh, maybe, maybe the spade could be, um, you know, a heart on on an occasion you know like I just kind of feel like um you know I'm getting distracted here I feel like you could be in a crowded room and you have the ability this is your level of intelligence you have the ability to see things that like nobody else could see and then you openly will bring it to the table and I feel like it can probably blow up a lot of people's lives um, when they when this happens. But I think people really admire this because you're not afraid to call people out for any bullshit that they throw your way or throw other people's way. I feel like, you know, thinking back to that St. Lucy, like you, I feel like sight is also being seen there. You see people for who they are. You see situations for what they are. And you're the, you know, you're the guy or the girl, or, you know, person that people go like, tr like they trust what you say, what you see is, and I feel like they admire this about you. It's weird that they wouldn't openly share this with you, probably because they may actually think it might go to your head, but they may think it might create like this, uh, energy like within you that's quite powerful and you know like the reality is people don't like people getting too big do you know what I mean like because like especially thinking back to your friends could be just a side note like the more like famous you would become the more like you're not accessible to um uh accessible to your friends right because then you're distracted you've got to go here you've got to go there you have less time for your friends so that'll be a note for somebody knight of wands in reverse <laughs> spewing no i would have to say with the knight of wands in regards to what people admire i, would, I feel like this is more to do with uh romantic hmm from a romantic point of view, I would say what people admire about you is like you have the ability to probably be um, a playboy, a playgirl, you know, you probably have the looks, the personality to play the field, but you do not. And I feel like people admire this about you. I feel like you guys have got strong sex appeal and you do not use this for misfortune. Um, and for others of you, people may admire your, like if you're superficial in any way, 
I feel like people admire this about you because you probably were never like superficial before. So coming back to that, you have resurrected from something like you've gone through something, you've come out the other side. And I feel like for those of you who that's really resonating with, if you are superficial now, so you buy what you want, you see what you want, you're going to have it. Like, you know, if you do have a little bit of a keeping up with the Jones, a sort of vibe going on, people admire this about you because they know you deserve it. They know you deserve to, you know, buy the bag you want, buy the car you want, buy the shoes you want, etc. Yeah. So, um, yeah, roll with that. So moving on to the knight of swords okay again there's this essence of your communication style coming in and i feel like you guys are very ambitious you're also very driven and i feel like people admire how action orientated you are so in saying that like i feel like you're very much uh you know that saying um uh say what is it say what you Mm. Does it say what you mean? Do what? Uh, some. Oh, it's gonna. I'm, I'm gonna have to Google it. It's like say what you mean and do what you say or something. I feel like you guys are very much like that. Yeah. Say what you mean and do what you say. Oh, hang on. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Um, so I kind of feel like that's what people admire about you. You don't, um, like when you say you're going to be somewhere, you're there, you're not late, you're always early, you're probably there before everyone else, or you're always there to help out. Like, um, you're just really driven, but back to that communication piece, like, and I feel like these are childhood friends or something like that, like. They love how they can just call you out and not have spoken to you for years and the communication never changes with you. Like it's like um, your friendship did not change even though you haven't hung out for six six years or six months. Do you know what I mean? Like you're still the same person, that same level of communication, that same level of support is always there and your friends really admire this about you, pal, too, and I don't think they tell you this enough. Probably because they just think you know, right? Um, especially when you see things that nobody else can see. So they probably just forget. Some people are just a bit forgetful like that. Seven of Wands in reverse, right? This is an interesting one for me because this one would say like... Hmm, you know, it talks about exhaustion, this card. It talks about being overwhelmed. So why would people... Maybe it's the fact like... People may f admire the fact that you, although a situation may exert you or overwhelm you, you're still willing to compromise, you know, like you're still willing to overcome the con co obstacles or the consequences. I don't know why you overcome consequences. Mm. Maybe you guys are really forgiving. Like maybe people really admire how forgiving you are. Like if people do come at you with like <clears throat> bad communication or conflict, you're, you're probably very um, open to the idea of giving them multiple ch chances as opposed to say maybe pile one or even like, you know, myself, I'm like three, I've got three strikes, you're out. That's me, I'm pretty harsh like that in my older years in my younger years I was like you can have as many chances as you like and that's the kind of vibe I think that's amazing to have that but the at the same time um yeah as long like that can work for some people for their whole in, whole entire life and then other people it can't so just be mindful of that but um yeah I just feel like people admire your level of compromising even though like it's at a detriment to yourself so that's kind of narcissistic energy coming through. So please, if that's really resonating with you, please check in with that energy and ask the question, are these people who I compromise for, who exert my energy, who create obstacles and challenges for me constantly, are they worth my time? Are they real friends, right? Could be family. 
Seven of Pentacles, this screams to me that people admire how much you invest all of your time into them. I honestly feel like this is more about you always helping others grow, helping others plant seeds for their longevity, for their future. I feel like you really help people to persevere with their own trials and tribulations. Uh, I think you help people have long-term view plans. Um, you, you put plans into place for other people. So the question I have for you today, pile number two, is are you putting plans in for yourself? You know, uh, make sure you're sprinkling magic on your own seeds, not everyone else's here. But people definitely uh, admire um, how hard you work to help them. And just be mindful, people at work may abuse that as well. So that's all I have for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed that message. Let me know down in the comments with a like or hit the subscribe if you want to see more of my videos when they release. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. So those of you who chose Fortuna. So before we jump into what people admire about you but do not tell you, we'll just grab some Astro cards. Hope you connect with this pile. So we have Earth elements on the bottom of the deck. So Capricorn, Taurus, um, Virgo. We have Aquarius. We have Aries, we have Jupiter, uh, Jupiter is linked with Sagittarius and Pisces and then we have 7th house partners. This is so weird because Paul too had friends come out there, it's so weird. Um, but yeah, so Jupiter is Sagittarius and Pisces and the 7th house is connected with Libra energy. Oh, the cats are running wild at the moment, so just bear with me. <clears throat> hmm. You change a lot, you know, with the card number here, five, but the Aquarius card adds up to five. Also for you change for stability, like you change, um, you're constantly changing in order to stabilize your life, in order to have more, maybe more abundance. Maybe you're constantly changing to find the right partner. And although you may feel like, why would people admire that about me? It's, it's really admirable. Like you may see the flaws within yourself and say, I need to change this, um, and it's unhealthy flaws. Like I think as you are evolving as a soul, pile number three, I feel like what people admire about you is who you were five years ago, ten years ago is not who you are today. Like you've evolved, you change, and you change for the better. And because of that, you know, people really admire how fortunate you have become. You know, you may have come from like uh, a low socioeconomical like status so unfortunately we can't all be born into the one percent family that would be nice no i don't think it would be like they come with their own problems but hopefully this is resonating with somebody but i feel like you're self-made and people really admire that about you you take you take the things that do not serve you or like people may bring to your attention or like X, Y, Z, and although you may not want to hear that constructive feedback, you take that and you turn it into money or like, I don't know, there's this element to you that's very fierce. Um, you know, you know who you are, you know what you want. Um, I am who I am, you know, and because of that, you are now very abundant. Uh, with the partners here, maybe like this energy, maybe you wanted to know like what the partners that you've had, what they sort of think about you but have never said. So although this is not specific romantic reading, maybe for this pile it is about romance here. Um, but we shall see. Uh, I think people definitely admire how fortunate you are though. Um, 
and it hasn't changed you. So maybe some of you came into fortune, you maybe have some money now and the people who, you know, like Jenny from the block, like you don't forget where you come from. Like you're still really down to earth, very grounded. Uh, you're also very quirky. Uh, so let's pull the tarot, find out what people admire about you, but will not say pile number three. So we have the death card in reverse. Um, a lot, a few more extra cards in the other piles, but everything happens for a reason. Hmm. So death card in reverse is overall energy. And then you've got the ace of cups, five of cups in reverse, the empress in reverse, the queen of swords, the two of cups, the world and two of swords. So this is strongly like having the two twos here and the ace of cups. And this is definitely like romantic. Like if you wanted to know what your current partner thinks about you, but won't say, or what they admire, sorry, not thinks about you, what they admire about you, but they don't really talk about. Um, this is 100% your pile as well. Um, it could even be exes as well, like, you know, what you wanted to know, what they admired about you. Sometimes you want to know if they admired anything. Um, but yeah, twos, you know, to see the um, the twos here as well, when you break down a four is a two, would definitely tell me, um, you know, this is all about partnerships, communication as well, marriage. So some of you may want to know what your husband admires about you, but will not say. So death, overall energy. This would sort of indicate to me, I feel like the main message, because like the death card in reverse actually does talk about somebody sort of resisting uh, transformation, but it's also talks about the fear of unknown. So I feel like, you know, maybe your partners love the fact that you can jump into a relationship or people admire how you can just jump into a relationship to the fear of unknown and, and give people the benefit of the doubt, trust people, you know, um, then like you don't have that mindset guilty until proven innocent. You're like innocent until proven guilty kind of mentality. And I think a lot of your partners really admire that because they've probably had to, um, they're probably under the microscope on all their initial relationships. And I feel like what maybe the main message you guys need to hear um, for you is like, you know, well, if things didn't work out, you've maybe had heaps of endings with relationships or, you know, people who you thought they were your soulmate and things like that. And maybe you want to know like, well, what did they admire about you? Like, and why did it come to an ending? Well, I would have to say it's always come to an ending because they were never your person pile three and always truly believe that. Um, and maybe with that death card in reverse, maybe that you resisting those endings, those individuals, you know, your exes and, and your partners that you have had, that's what they admired about you, that you were still trying to hold on to them, even though that it was over. Okay. So that's very narcissistic too. Um, You're very practical and you make people, your partners feel very secure. Okay. And this is why, you know, if people are at a place in their life where they feel very insecure, um, I would have to say, um, you making them feel secure 
was probably one reason why they had to leave because, you know, how can you be in a low vibrational energy with a high vibrational person? You can't. Like, low vibrational people need to sort that stuff out and then they can be with high vibrational people. Like, it's, you know, like when you're around the sun all the time, file three, and you're like, you're in the depths of your, you know, dark night of the soul. It's like, you are the sun. Like, and even I didn't even pick up on that. You're very bright light. <clears throat> People really admire this about you, but it's probably the what you the main message somebody needs to hear is these people leave your life because you are too bright. You're happy, you're going places, you're very fortunate, you've come from the depths of your own dark night of the soul, and you're on a really good journey. These people leave your life because they're in a low vibration. Okay? And at the end of the day, those Ten of Swords moments happen for you for the greater good. <clears throat> that's why these people leave you. So that's that side of this reading, infiltrated. Let's talk about what they admired about you. Um, you have a lot to offer here, more than what you realize, okay? Um, <clears throat> so moving into the Ace of Cups. Just bear with me. I'm getting over a flu. Um, so I have to pause the video because I don't want to make flu sounds. Um, but Ace of Cups would definitely indicate what they admired about you, and I feel like it's past tense, is the level of love and compassion that you will always bring into a new relationship. You don't hold back. You're like, I like you. I'm going to show up for you. I'm going to shower you with all this love. And they admired it, but some of them took it for granted, which is probably why your angels had to step in and create Ten of Swords uh, endings as well, because I feel like a lot of you have been used and abused to have picked this pile. Um, you know, people are, and, and even your friends and your family, they admire how it doesn't matter how many Ten of Swords moments you guys go through, you're always up for new beginnings. You're like, okay, another one bites the dust. Um, you know, you like, that's a really great song to put on after an ending with somebody. Another one bites the dust. If anyone needs that with our uh, queen, um, uh, it's a good one to sort of pick yourself up and put yourself on the horse but I kind of feel like you guys are really good at that and you know your ex-partners may really admire this about you too pile three like um you may date somebody for like eight weeks and they want to call it quits and you're like although like you don't show signs that you're upset you probably are quite upset with all the cups of energy he tells me you're a very emotional person and there's nothing wrong with that um you've got swords here as well which means uh you're also um uh, very community, uh, your emotional and logic. There's a even balance here of the two, especially with the two of cups, two of swords. Um, but yeah, I think the, the partners, they, they admire how like when an ending happens, you're like, okay, bye. Like you, you're, you're okay with it, or at least you present yourself to be okay with it. And they admire that. And they admire how you just keep moving. You're like, okay, well, you didn't want my cup. So I'm going to move on to somebody else who wants my cup. Because with the five of cups in reverse, this tells me like you, you forgive yourself. There's a, there's a sense of you about self-forgiveness. So these individuals know you've made the wrong choice by pursuing them. And what they admire about you is you're able to self-forgive and move on and accept the fact that maybe it was, you know, you you knew they weren't going to be able to provide you or what you're looking for in a relationship. Um, so you still took action towards them and then it didn't end out well. So it, there's this sense of you, like what they admire about you. And this is, again, very narcissistic. Like you take accountability for uh, pursuing them when they probably led you on. So... There could be uh, a message there or a lesson, I should say, for someone, the fact that um, you may keep getting sent the same kind of lover because you are not setting healthy boundaries, okay? Um, <clears throat> you move on pretty quickly as well, which is what people admire. When it comes to romantic experiences, you accept that things aren't going to work out. You focus on your healing. You move on, okay? The Empress card in reverse is to what people or what they admire about you. For some of you, it could be the fact that you just don't want children. Uh, for others of you, it could be the fact that you don't, you're not clingy. You don't try and nurture them and tell them what to eat and what to wear. And, um, you know, this is the car you should bride. Like, that's the kind of vibe. Like, you don't try and smother your partners. 
Um, you allow them a lot of space, a lot of freedom. Um, and that's sort of what I'm really picking up with the Empress in reverse. Queen of Swords, love this. You don't beat around the bush is what they admired about you or admire about you. You tell it how it is. You're very independent, but you're also very supportive as well. You know, you make really good judgments, especially when it comes to picking restaurants I'm hearing. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of all I'm getting with the uh, Queen of Swords. <clears throat> I think if you, it doesn't matter what your physique looks like, I think they admire how confident and comfortable you are in your own skin as well. Like I don't feel like any of you sit around having a pity party about what you look like or what you're wearing. You just sort of own it. Uh, you are who you are and you, you're sort of in that power, uh, which a lot of people around you and particularly the partners you've had really admired. They didn't feel like they had to um, nurture you. Um, they didn't have to like, you know, pick you up off the ground, but yeah, it's sort of really weird and it really, somebody let me know that this has found the, the reader, um, the viewer. <clears throat> um, so yeah, two of cups obviously, uh, just indicates what they admire about you is the level of happiness you were trying to bring to the relationship. You know, you're always, uh, you're, kind, the, you're the kind of individual who's always fighting for a harmonious union, right? Um, you know, you've, you've probably, you probably haven't said this to a lot of suitors or partners, but you probably saw them all as marriage material. They saw this, pile three, especially if you deal with narcissists. They know when they're victims or prey, um, see them as marriage material. They know that. So I kind of feel like they admired the fact that you saw the potential in them, okay, to make it less toxic sounding. Um, I definitely feel they admired that you brought a lot of creativity maybe in the bedroom and you brought a lot of creativity in trying to keep them happy or maybe even trying to keep them. You know, they admired that you were willing to go above and beyond to have a relationship with with them even though they may not have wanted a relationship with you and that burns like that you know that would burn me I'm burnt I'm like I'm feeling burnt now um and I can probably relate to that when I think back into my 20s and how I was with um some of my suitors um who were all pieces of shit um <laughs> but you know you live and learn I chose I chose that direction um, for myself. So I chose to stick around. I've only had myself to blame and I kind of feel like you probably can relate to that. But with the world card here, you know, um, what people admire about you, you must have achieved something because the world card is all about achievement and fulfillment and somebody feeling whole. So maybe they admired how whole you made them feel, even though they felt like so unstable themselves. And if you've sort of helped anyone achieve anything like, like any of these exes, if you've helped them achieve anything, they definitely admire you for, for your continuous support. Again, I guess that's sort of coming back through back to the queen of swords energy. Um, yeah, I just feel like this energy, like some, one of you guys, some of you guys must have just been like hammered with heaps of toxic partners. And maybe you're just sort of sitting around wanting to know, well, what the f like F did they admire about me? Like why invest in me when they can go and invest in something else? Um, you definitely made them feel, you know, very fulfilled. You boosted their ego without you even knowing it. I think maybe you guys are very, maybe hard to catch as well. And again, looking back at those astro cards, like Aquarius is a very unique, very quirky, very in their power. Aries are very strong strong personalities, they're feisty, they know what they want, they go after what they want. So I feel like if these individuals were all in low vibrational energy, which all narcissists are, um, you fed their ego, okay? And I feel like you made them feel complete with the world card because maybe your whole world ended up revolving around their world and that, you know, boosts their ego. Narcissists love that, right? So then obviously with the two of swords here, this sort of tells me what they admired about you was, you know, 
the, the, the main message I'm picking up was like, you were happy to sit around waiting for them to make decisions. Like you were happy. They admired the fact that you, you accepted that, you know, choosing you or being in a relationship with you may have been a difficult decision for them. So you were happy to sit there and wait for them to make a choice. Now, if that doesn't resonate, you're like, no way, Crystal. Like I told them to F and beat it. Um, it could be a sense of duality there that maybe a lot of these partners, you know, what they admired about you is maybe you were very much maybe in like your yin yang energy. You're able to maybe mirror their energy. Like, especially if they were struggling to make a choice to be in a relationship with you or not. Like, I feel like duality is like, again, two people sort of mirroring each other. So I kind of feel like you mirrored these people and they knew they had some kind of control over you or something. I don't know. It's kind of weird. This pile got really strange because... The other two piles didn't, this did not happen. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, guys. I hope this message found the right person. Let me know down in the comments. That would be appreciated. And uh, hit the like and subscribe if you want to see more content. Bye. Hey, pile four. Welcome to your reading. So let's just grab some astro cards before we jump in and find out what people admire about you but do not say. So bottom of the deck, we have Gemini, I think. We have Virgo with Abundance. We have Aquarius. Some of you keep coming from the other piles. Um, we have Scorpio, Transformation, Third House, Messages. So Third House is connected also with Gemini. So strong Gemini placements here. Um, <clears throat> and obviously Jupiter is linked with uh, Sagittarius and Pisces. So Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, Aquarius, Scorpio, Gemini. So that may correlate uh, with your birth chart or it may not. Um, have to say a lot of you probably... Probably coming out of a lot of a period of self-reflection at the moment, going off these cards. Um, but yeah, so let's look at the Ishtar card. So feminine power, sexuality, heaven on earth. Mm, if you're one, I feel like... <clears throat> Whoever you're currently messaging at the moment, this is the message you're going to get. So you're in communication with somebody. You want to know why they, what they admire about you, but they're not telling you. It's funny how these readings can just be taken over by. That's fine. So yeah, I'm picking up from that third house with the messages. Uh, and the Gemini is also all about communication, mental stimulation. So if you're talking to anyone specifically at this time, um, you know, the conversation is really good. You want to know like why, what, what's keeping them like talking to you. I kind of feel, and for others of you, um, it's just anyone that you're sort of talking to at this time. So someone has come to this reading specifically wanting to know what pe someone admires about you. And then for others of you. It's people who, who are in your immediate, like, anyway, let's grab some tarot. <clears throat> I feel like with that Virgo card, you guys are probably obviously very analytical. Uh, you probably do a lot of thinking and introspection, like self-reflection before you um, take action towards anything. Two, four, six, we'll go seven. 
Knight of Wands in reverse is overall energy. So Seven of Swords reverse, the Hermit reversed, uh, King of Swords, Five of Swords, the Chariot. Four of Pentacles and Five of Pentacles. Okay. Let's just do that. Hmm. Maybe messages or communication has actually stopped with this person for some of you. Um, and just bear with me, I'll pause the video because I'm getting over a really bad flu, so I don't want to cough into the video because that's gross. So if you notice that, that's what's going on. Um, okay, so Knight of Wands in reverse, you may have come from another pile, hey. Um, but as the overall energy, I don't know why they would admire this, but you may have very scattered energy. So when I'm sort of trying, the more I think about it or the more I tuck into that is like your energy is all over the place at the moment. Like you're busy at work. You maybe have a family, you're busy with family life. You're busy with friends. Like your, your energy is very scattered. So this person really admires or what people admire about you. When you take time out for people, they know like they've cut into your time is sort of the vibe I'm really picking up with that Knight of Wands. Um, like, if they need you and you drop everything and go to them, like, people know, like, what... People admire the fact that you will drop everything and go to them is the vibe I'm picking up with that Knight of Wands in reverse. doesn't matter what commitment you have, you will sort of drop everything and, and attend to, tend to their needs. Seven of Swords, what people admire about you, this is a pretty pretty much no-brainer. It's the fact that you don't have a tendency to hide anything from anyone, okay? Like what you see is sort of what you get. Um, you may have been somebody in the past who um, maybe did a bit of white lying, but not so much anymore. You're standing your truth. You, you know who you are, right? And I feel like coming back to this Ishta card, which my apologies, we didn't really connect with, like you guys may, a lot of you who have picked this pile are strong in your strong feminine energy. You may be tapping into a different sexual side of yourself as way as well. You could be um, exploring different forms of sexuality. People may be admiring this. The person you're talking to at the moment or not talking to could be admiring this about you. And like the heaven on earth here, I definitely feel like you are very present. People admire how present you are. So you know when you can talk to some people and you can see that they're thinking about dinner, they've got to think, oh, they've got to contact Susan to pick up the paper or whatever. Um, I feel like with that heaven on earth element there, I, when people talk to you, they know they have your undivided attention is what I'm picking up there. But people very much admire your feminine power. So I feel like any women watching this or men, you wear whatever the fuck you want to wear. And I, this is the first time I've actually swore in any, any of the piles today. I'm very proud of myself. Um, yeah, you have a very unique style. And I think like you probably wear things that most people wouldn't dare to wear like you know and take that as it resonates I feel like you're very much in your queen or maybe even empress power at this time or emperor power if you are masculine watching <clears throat> a male watching so yeah I don't know there's this element to you people admire that you know you keep things moving you know you're constantly moving forward you sort of don't sit around you know, waiting for things to happen. I feel like you're very much quick to take action. You may even be very quick to find out the truth as well. So like uh, people may admire the fact that you will, you know, you might be a little bit sneaky to find out the truth here. You know, you may actually use, like I'm sort of looking, the more I look at that card, people may admire the fact that, um, 
you can find out if, if people are only willing to give you like little bits of information, that's fine. You, you can access the other information, however that may be. It could be through communicating with others, but, um, there is a sneaky vibe there. I feel like people admire that they can't keep secrets from you um, or you're willing to find out their secrets without them knowing that you found out their secrets. I don't know. That's weird that people would admire that. Mm, well, if it's feelings. The Hermit in Ricard, uh, Ricard, in reverse, as it admiration, it may actually have to do with like, say if somebody <clears throat> is like, you know, is having a bad day or something like that, you won't allow them to isolate is sort of the vibe I'm picking up here. Like if somebody is going like downtown in their emotions, I feel like what people admire about you is you know what kind of message to send people, you know what kind of communication somebody needs to hear if they are going through a transformation. Um, you're able to analyze situations for what they are or you're able to analyze people's needs at that time and that's what people admire about you. You know exactly what to say, when to say it and it probably has something to do with that seven of swords. You know people's hidden secrets, you know their hidden feelings. So you have a very good uh, intuition or knack even um, to know what to do and when to do it is sort of what I'm picking up with the Hermit in reverse. So the King of Swords, again, this just indicates to me people really admire your very direct, honest conversations. Um, you know, you, you only speak the truth and you only seek the truth. And, you know, a lot of people aren't like this pile four. A lot of people are happy to go through life just pretending like things, like pretending the elephants in the room are not there. And I don't think you are people like this. I think you want, um, there are no elephants. You would not want an elephant in the room. And I feel like with the King of Swords here, um, you know, you're always happy to put the truth out on the table. So Five of Swords, King of Swords. And even with the chariot there, this sort of just gives me the indication like once the truth is out on the table, you're happy to compromise and you're happy to move forward. But at the same time, I feel like with the four of pentacles there, you will hold on to that truth because you like people admire this. Although you're happy to move forward from maybe sneaky behavior People admire the fact that you don't forget it. You forgive, but you don't forget because you refuse to be put out in the cold again. Okay, that's a very strong uh, message for, for somebody. But Five of Swords, you know, um, you know, people really admire how you'll face problems head on, right? Um, you don't, again, You if the elephant's there, you just say, what's that elephant doing here? Let's talk about it. So I feel like you initiate those really hard conversations when people would be more than happy to ignore them or pretend they're not happening. I feel like you definitely um, are all about moving forward. And the only way you know to move forward is to compromise and to talk and to communicate. Uh, and I feel like you very much think a lot. I think you guys are very much in your mind. You think you do a lot of thinking before you speak. And I feel like people really admire that. Um, or whoever you are trying to figure out what they admire about you. Why do they keep coming back maybe? It could be the fact like the energy I'm picking out. It could be like somebody has hurt you. They're currently going through a transformation. You're wondering why they're messaging you again. Okay, um, so yeah, specifically with the chariot though, this talks about somebody, <clears throat> why they would admire you again is because mm, it could be your level of confidence, but it could also, again, it has to do with the kind of action you're taking towards them. So if you are romantically involved or you are communicating with anyone, it's your level of communication, it's your level of attention to them uh, or time to them because they know you're very busy. You are in a very fast paced life or period of your life right now. And I feel like 
what people are admiring about you again i feel like i'm repeating myself is like you're constantly moving forward in all areas of your life and you always have time for everybody um and i think people just naturally love that about you because you make them feel loved um just be mindful that um you know burning the candle at two ends um can be a detriment to you to you um four of pentacles hmm. like four of pentacles would talk about a person who's really good at saving money but i don't know i don't know i guess a romantic suitor would like that especially if they've been with people who know how to spend it um it's also about security, right? So there's this element that you make people feel very secure. You might be really good at gift giving. And I know Four of Pentacles doesn't, more talks about somebody being materialistic in their own space. But I feel like you guys might be big on shiny objects, but you, um, you're also big on gift giving. Okay, and people admire that about you. And I feel like with the Five of Pentacles here, it throws me off a little bit. It could be the fact that maybe people or some people just admire how like you may have experienced a lot of financial loss, though you know how to save money to buy big shiny objects. I don't know why some people would admire that. I guess the people who would admire that are people who are in the same boat as you, right? Who earn the same similar kind of money as you, have the same experience, the same kind of losses or have the same kind of outgoings um you know who are constantly going through hardship but they admire how well you can still save so although you face financial hardship or financial losses in some way shape or form you're still able to save money and people admire that it, it sort of gives them i guess admiration because you have full control over your life and especially your money as well so maybe some of you guys have picked this pile of as like in your 20s or something like that um which is why this sort of energy is coming through it's quite peculiar to be honest um because yeah five of can five of pentacles is admiration like they admire you that you maybe they admire that you're happy to kick people out in the cold after like you know maybe they abuse your trust that could be a level of admiration there but yeah so that's all i have for you guys i hope that message found the right people uh sending you lots of love and light uh don't forget to hit the like button or subscribe if you want to see more of my content and bye